The real queen of the South, the Guatemalan Marlori Chacon. The queen of the South. This phrase might ring bells of the Netflix dev series with the actress Alice Brava, playing the role of Theresa Mendoza if you've been fortunate to watch it. The series portrays a personality that is inspired by real-life events. Guatemalan Marlori Chacon is the main character of Perez Revert's book, which was used to create the Spanish-inspired telenovela series, The Queen of the South. Although the book is a work of fiction, it is shocking how many of those events are close to the real life and exploits of the real Mallory Chacon. The Female Drug Lord The Queen of the South is a movie centered on drug trafficking, and its inspiration was drawn from Marlory Chacon. Drug trafficking is an illegal activity that numerous countries such as the US frown upon. When caught, no amount of mercy can set you free, but somehow, this drug lord did get a pretty good deal. The drug traffickers trade cocaine, marijuana, and other drugs in exchange for huge sums of money. Men are mostly engaged in it due to the risk associated with it. However, the case of Mallory Chacon becomes an exception. She is well known in Guatemala as one of the powerful female bosses of drug trafficking. Her story makes her a heroine in the drug trafficking business as she deals with cartels in Mexico and Colombia for cocaine transportation to the United States. Furthermore, she also had protection from the Guatemalan government. Nonetheless, she thrived in the drug business until she was arrested in the United States in 2014 after turning herself to the authorities. In today's video, we will take a deep dive into the life of Mallory Chacon so stay tuned. Also please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and hit the notification button for more captivating and informative content from this channel. The Life Story of Mallory Chacon Marlory Dadiana Chacon Russell was born on October 4, 1972, in Guatemala City, Guatemala. She was a middle-class city girl and soon dropped out of school after finishing high school and pursuing psychology at the college for a few years. She started a small businesses and got into the drug trafficking game after dropping out of school, where she will gain fame, fortune, and notoriety. This smart woman was also involved in the logistics of drug trading and money laundering. She moved cash profits from drug deals around the region for her clients in Honduras, Mexico, and Guatemala. She had a drug trafficking organization that was stationed in her country. The Kingpin transported cocaine to the United States by engaging in business with cartels in Mexico and Colombia. Her organization supplied cocaine shipments to Mexican drug enterprises, including Las Zetas and the Sinaloa Cartel of El Chapo fame. The organization, under her directives, laundered tens of millions of US dollars in drug proceeds each month. Jackan had a close relationship with Cotton Vasquez, a drug trafficker. This woman had a beautiful start in her drug trafficking business. It all started with her meeting with the Lorenzana family. Vergara Hernandez had a $1.8 million problem sitting on the borders of Honduras in the form of a ton of cocaine. So she contacted Chacon for help after her deal with her buyer failed. Chacon was engaged in the cocaine business with Vergara Hernandez in Colombia, and they needed a buyer for their cocaine. That led to the meeting with the Lorenzana family in 2004 when she was in her early 30s. She was so desperate to find a buyer for all the cocaine they were moving due to the market demand at the time and losing money due to the cocaine not being distributed and sold. Fortunately, her cousin connected her to a few people she felt could help her by investing in the business. In 2004, she was invited to a meeting with her husband, Elu, at the Guatemalan Department of Isabel, where they discussed the cocaine business. This meeting was a life-saving meeting. Elu was shocked at how Chacon responded to the discussion, while her husband was sitting there quietly without uttering a word. In his dealings, he dealt with men, so he thought Chacon's husband would do the talking. Elu had no choice but to give her the benefit of the doubt and believe in her. They spoke about the logistics that would be used to collect the cocaine in Honduras and deliver the dollars. It was also discussed how the cocaine would be sold. This deal was her first deal in the drug trafficking business. They succeeded in selling the cocaine to the Lorenzana family. This brought Vergara Hernandez, Cotton Lopes, and Mallory Chacon together as business partners. 
After many years of engaging in the business, she became popular as the Guatemalans knew her as the boss of drug trafficking in Guatemala. Her protection was from the National Police of Guatemala and the former cartel employer. It was alleged that she had a good relationship with the interior minister, Mauricio Lopez Bonilla, who was behind the supply of security to protect her. Due to this, people were afraid of her as no one could harm the minister. Although she was very good at the drug trafficking game, she was exposed by her close allies who included Kieser Pereira and Borreo. This will eventually lead to her persecution and arrest. The accusation and arrest of Chacon, the Drug Enforcement Agency DEA, started following Chacon's business activity based on reports that she engaged in drug trafficking and money laundering. Other drug traffickers provided this information to the DEA, who collaborated with DEA. The informants helped the DEA in locating Chacon's co-conspirators in Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico. They started investigations into the allegations. As a result, the DEA started chasing Chacon in 2008 and watched her closely to see if they would find any information about her. An informant revealed to the U.S. Attorney's Office how Chacon orchestrated two cocaine shipments of 1,200 kilos from Honduras. A group called Caracols transported the cocaine to Guatemala, which was sent to Mexico through cartels. Borreo and Cesar Barrera, who were in the drug trafficking business, also accused Chacon of engaging in the cocaine business. Barrera provided the DEA with key information about drug traffickers, which helped the DEA arrest and sentence the allies and accomplices of Chacon. Colombian Orlando Fernandez also provided the U.S. Attorney's Office with his deals with Chacon. The deal was about the supply of cocaine by Chacon for money. A former associate of Chacon also testified that Chacon organized the arrival of the drugs and owned a part of the shipment that is about 300 kilos. These accusations were instrumental in getting investigations started into Chacon's dealings. On August 25, 2011, the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of Florida formally accused Chacon of conspiring to traffic at least 5 kilos of cocaine. However, Judge Steve Brown instructed the claims to be sealed until investigations were completed. In January 2012, the U.S. Treasury Department made the accusations of Chacon on drug trafficking public. The Treasury Department accused Chacon of supplying cocaine to the Zetas. In August of that same year, the Treasury Department applied further sanctions on Chacon and included her daughter, Stefano Castellanos Chacon. In October 2012, Chacon hired a lawyer to defend her against the accusations. In that same year, Chacon's lawyer made it known that Chacon admitted that she would hand herself over to be arrested as she faced charges for which she could be prosecuted. In November 2014, Chacon met with the U.S. Treasury Department to resolve her issue so that her husband and daughter would be relieved of accusations. On September 10, 2014, the U.S. authorities fulfilled the warrant for the arrest of Chacon. Unfortunately, she was arrested in Miami, United States. The presiding judge who sat on her case ordered the Federal Bureau of Prisons to exclude Chacon's name and identification number from electronic files so that no one could access her files online. Her file was to be hidden from the public until the court decided otherwise. In mid-2014, Chacon came before Judge Turnoff, where the charges against her were read before her. She denied all the accusations against her. She later changed her mind in December 2014 and pleaded guilty. The judge recommended a sentence of 5 to 40 years in prison and a fine of between $5 million and $25 million. Her lawyer and the U.S. Attorney's Office agreed on her plea and sentence. She then signed documents that confirmed her accepting the accusation of engaging in drug trafficking. She was sentenced to 26 years in prison in 2014. Her partners, Vergara Hernandez and Cotton Vasquez, were arrested earlier before her. She decided to collaborate with the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency by providing them with information about other drug traffickers in the county. She was accused of laundering $10 million of drug profits every month by the U.S. Treasury Department. Due to her collaboration, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency was able to arrest her accomplices, Lopes Bonilla and former Vice President Roxana Baldetti. These state officers were accused of corruption and were sentenced to imprisonment. 
Chacon pleaded guilty, and her collaboration made the judge reduce her sentence to less than 10 years in prison. After serving her years of imprisonment, she was released from jail. Though she has been released from jail, she is still at the court's mercy as she agreed to collaborate completely with the U.S. authorities to prosecute and arrest accomplices. She is to serve as a confidential informant under guarded supervision and not return to drug trafficking. Conclusion During Chacon's reign, she and her family lived luxuriously in Guatemala City, associating with politicians and high society, and traveling in Europe. By her late 30s, she was a mother of five and the owner of a corporate empire that encompassed hotels, a national lottery, a construction firm, and a high-end clothing store. Right from humble beginnings, she rose to the top of the food chain, and as the law would always catch up, she fell back again. Maybe not back to her former conditions, but the fall of the Queen of the South became too comfortable in her seemingly divine protection, eventually leading to her downfall. Perhaps she got too big a target that it was easy to betray her. But whatever led to her downfall, what we know is that everything that is illegal always has an end. Law enforcement doesn't rest. Her story is anything but ordinary and it will be told for years to come. The woman was officially named a drug kingpin by the U.S. Treasury Department. The Queen of the South reigns on. Well, that's all the time we had for now. I do hope that you liked the video and learned something from it. Please also leave comments on the video on your thoughts on the Queen of the South. Also don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more captivating content from this channel. See you on the next one.